Hey, Susie, can you hear me? Hi. There she is. Uh, how are you? <laughs> sorry, sorry about being late. I was waiting for the time and then boom, 3.33 and then, you know, <laughs> sorry, sorry. How are you? Doing great. How are you doing, Susie? I am well. Yeah. What's, what's new with you? Nothing. Same old, same old. Just looking mm. for ways to make some money, real money, serious money in real estate. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> So, catch me up. What's 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 been, what's been happening? No, nothing. Seriously, we're still in the crypto space. We're still. Uh, I I did some uh, some something small. I invested with somebody else in mortgage note. I'm I'm trying. I'm I'm out there trying to make it happen. Yeah, I like mortgage notes. Nice and uh, you know, if if they default, then you get property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if if it's in a good state, that is. Yeah. Otherwise, money can get tied up for you don't know how long. <laughs> Indefinitely, I'm telling you, man. People have all these ways of trying to make money in, in real estate and doing things. It's like, look, man. Yes. Like, yeah. this is this is the thing about, about apartment buildings over mm -hmm. uh, residential property or anything else, but anything commercial, really. It's yeah. like when you when the banks look at it, they look at cash flow because cash flow is what determines whether or not a business has value whether or not a property has value and mm -hmm. then how much that cash flow costs mm -hmm. is going to let people know if you're getting a good deal or a bad deal so if you're getting a low cap rate on a, on a on a on a deal it's like it better have some level of intrinsic value that's not straight up cash flow like mm -hmm. market appreciation like buying mm -hmm. properties here in south florida you know you can get that but if you're buying in the midwest where there's not a lot of market appreciation and, 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 and if you end up buying like in an expensive neighborhood where there's not a lot of cash flow, then, then what? You get, <laughs> you get the worst of both worlds. Right. And you so, don't want that. yeah, exactly. I, I try to talk to people about, about buying uh, businesses. Okay. Right. Because when you get to a certain level, at least from what I've experienced with some really high net worth people is mm -hmm. that people, they buy and sell businesses the same way I buy apartment buildings ah okay it is the, the only difference is that you know if you buy a business there's a chance that it could go bankrupt and go into zero but mm -hmm. on the on apartment buildings that doesn't happen mm -hmm. right? like, wor worst case scenario let's just say there's a fire and every single unit gets taken out you got insurance uh-huh <laughs> yeah. right? and then build it back better than before and you know and now it's, now it's worth you know double what you had it for Mm -hmm. right? And then people are like, I love it. Yeah. Believe me, my soul. I love it. Like my husband and I, this was always our dream, our goal, our plan. But it's so much like nowadays. Maybe before it was easier to get in, but nowadays, like, because I don't want to buy single, you know, like single family yeah. home. But we were thinking like a quad or maybe a smaller, like eight, wow. 10 units, but not in so expensive. Bigger, bigger, yes. <laughs> bigger but the entry print is so much you know oh, what yeah. i'm saying so that's that's kind of like the drawback but eventually that's what we would love to get into yeah i mean so you guys want to do it as active investors you want to do it as passive investors you know what when we were talking about it it was active like we wanted to own the building like yeah. collect rent. that's what we wanted to do but since we couldn't like go because the market got so crazy we could we couldn't really purchase anything so then i met you at the conference i'm like hmm, this this could be a good way instead of packing our money let it work a little bit you know what yeah. i'm saying but if, but the the end goal we you know we've always wanted to kind of like own some um, building that yeah. was that was the goal but I, hey don't get me wrong i love i love passing investing i can be anywhere in the world my money's working for me i love that as well because i don't want to deal with contractor tenants and all that good stuff i just want to make some real money mm -hmm. yeah and that's the that's the that's the beauty of it right is if you want to do the work then you can make a ton of money right if you don't want to do yeah. the work 
then you can make really good money. <laughs> right. So you're still young. Yeah. Uh, kind of. Yeah. It's kind of. How, how old are you, if you don't want me asking? I'm 46. I'm 46. Oh, just, you're baby. Yeah. You're baby. Ah, Not even halfway yet. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah. I'll be 40 in June. Look at you. Now look at the baby calling me a baby. <laughs> it takes one to know one. Uh, I talked to Latoya Jackson yesterday. Thank you for that referral. Oh, no problem. She's awesome. I, I love you. connecting good people. Yes. And then she, she told me, she's like, oh, my God, I spoke with Rasul. I'm so happy. Thank you, Susie. I think I'm going to do some great stuff with you. Yeah. I, I, I love it. But it's so funny. You know, I met I met her to um, Marvin's conference. So I've, I've been meeting a bunch of awesome people. Even yeah. the lady doing the mortgage note with, I like it all happened. At the exactly. Is the crypto the main thing that you guys do right now? The crypto is the main thing because that's where we make the bulk of our money. But we we've been investing in other stuff as yeah. well. Um, but we're not doing one thing in crypto. We're not what, doing. What are you doing in crypto? I'm curious. We, we, so we in, we investing with different company that trade for us. Like my husband does a little bit of trading on his own, but this is not how we pay our bills. We basically get getting our return because we we invest with different company that trade crypto and then give us our our return. Like some company, we get our um profit back like on a monthly basis. We okay. have other company that's like you know weekly. But right now it's a little bit shaky. It used to be it used to be stronger, but we're still in the space, but trying to branch out to other things because this is so volatile you know what i'm saying yeah like you're, you're not money, but invest in other assets because right yeah that's that, gonna fall out any moment what uh oh, what um you don't use traders domain do you no you know what that is i know what that is yeah why don't you like it um i don't know i'm not that techie but okay. i've read about people who like some um some lady that i'm in contact with because she does some tour panama relocation tour that's that's how she makes money so she was talking about it like yeah. she just um create or buy those domain and then sell them at a higher higher price no no, like no 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 not not selling domains there's a is a, a forex trading company called traders domain oh i could talking about selling domain in real estate no, no. i know i know what that is I okay. know what it is because one of the one of the um company that trades for us that's what they use. But I know they've been having some, you know, issues. One of them. That's not the main one. That's not the only one that you use. You use multiple. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna have to have you hook me up so I can start putting some money to work too. <laughs> hey, why not? But but I feel like you know what I'm saying. That's why you see me so aggressive trying to do other things like the note, the mortgage, because it's not what is it used to be. Like those returns, they were way better. Now it's like a, it's a little bit shaky. So we're trying to kind of like move in other direction and stuff. But there's still yeah. some money to be made for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when. Uh, so I guess uh, in when you when you compare crypto and also the volatile stuff. You know, real estate seems a little bit slower, but the risk is super low compared oh, to... Oh, it's always been like that. Slower, oh, yeah. but slower. Because, I mean, it's real. It's real. It's tangible. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But when you're in a market that's very highly speculative, like, you can, things can go wrong at any time. <laughs> Let me show you... So you I heard you have the, the I mean, an awesome project going on? Man, I... It, I'm not even supposed to talk about it because the, the documents I don't think are available yet. Oh. Maybe they are. Maybe they are. Have you gone to my investor portal yet? No, not really. Herbie, Herbie been checking this. I, since since we invested the money, I have not logged in. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> no worries. So that's the investor portal. Um, okay. And I don't know. On my end, obviously, I see everything. But okay. this, is, this, is what, this is what you'd find. Okay. So it's actually three properties in one. In Texas. In Texas, yeah, six hundred and seventy-three units. There's one in Austin, and then two that are in Houston. And my firm, Disrupt Equity, we're based out of Houston. Okay. So in February, we closed on two hundred and sixty units, and then December, we closed on another two hundred and sixty units. Those are like ten minutes apart from each other. Mm. Um, okay. So we've done we've done quite a bit. I think in October we did three hundred and eighty-seven units. Um, okay in Houston as well. 
So like we're we're really strong. Like Disrupt Equity is like top three Inc. Five thousand real estate companies in twenty twenty two. Okay. So you partner with them? Uh, partner with them. My <laughs> partner with them. Let me see. DisruptEquity.com. Oh, they changed the website a little bit. So about us, let's learn more. It's Ben and Ferris. Yeah. <gasps> now I have to look at this. I've never seen, I haven't seen this website before. They changed okay. all of it. Our track record, our portfolio. What's real estate syndication? <gasps> They took off our team. I'm not even listed on oh, there. Okay. Yeah. Dang. Well, that was uh, anticlimactic. Because <laughs> you, it used to be when you go to the about us, they had all they had the whole team. Oh, okay. Uh, every every there. Oh, okay. So you part of the team? I'm director of acquisitions for Disrupt Equity. Oh, you are. Oh, I thought your company was um, uh, Mara Capital. M me personally, yes. My personal investment group is called oh, Mara Capital okay. Group. Got you. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I'm director of acquisitions. Okay. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah. Uh, I run acquisitions. So I do the underwriting and the analysis on. Um, uh, for the company, for all the deals that come through. So we've looked at this and hammered away at it, picking it okay. apart, trying to figure out what we need to do to, to make the numbers work on these deals. Um, and this one is actually awesome because, you know, interest rates are really high right now, mm -hmm. which is, you know, very risky for a lot of people. We talked about cash flow in the beginning. Mm -hmm. This property has a 3.8% interest rate in place that we are taking over that you can assume oh wow yeah, yeah we're assuming that loan oh, and it has oh. seven years interest only right so all this uncertain economic time by the time this property is done we're going to go through a little bit of dip in the economy and then it's going to um, be on the recovery and all of a sudden so this property is going to be like uh, bulletproof throughout the whole thing and we're mm -hmm. still putting 39 percent down so we're really low leveraged into this uh, mm -hmm. We're only, yeah. A funny story about this one is the owner of this portfolio wanted to sell it last year, right? Before all these interest rate hikes happened and everybody got scared and they stopped buying. So they couldn't even move the property, but they were hoping to get 135 million for it. Oh, okay. And we're picking it up for 111 million. That's our contract price. Wow. So we're buying it with $24 million plus in equity going in. And then from the 111, we're we're paying 39% down off of that. Okay. Right. Okay. Wow. So that's a that's a really huge uh benefit there. Super low interest, super low purchase price. Uh two of the three pack properties are just 10 minutes from our headquarters over there. And the third is five minutes away from two of the other Austin properties that we own. We have 198 units, the Cascade Apartments in Austin, and we have 369 units, the array also in Austin as well. We picked both those up last year. Um, okay. A really great deal. So, and uh, as a as a, an example, right? Because this is 111 million divided by 673 units. We're picking this up. This whole portfolio is $165,000 per unit, right? Mm. It's crazy okay. cheap. Wow. And we bought, um, we bought the Array and Cascade at 180 and 190 thousand dollars a door. So, so I mean, we're That's walking in with thirty five thousand dollars a door in like equity, walking into the property. So it's crazy to be able to find a deal like that. And I it find a deal like that in this market, right here, right? We <laughs> we reviewed seven hundred plus deals. It's it takes a long time because yeah, remember when we look through deals, it takes hours to look through one. Wow. Right. And so I, I'm director of acquisitions. We have a whole entire acquisitions team. Everybody's doing the analysis. We have assistants and everything like that. People are doing preliminary underwriting. I do some of the final underwriting as well. And mm -hmm. after going through all of these deals, we found this one. And because of the reputation that we have um, 
uh, in Texas, you know, the brokers went to bat for us. And I actually know the people who were second place on this deal. Oh, wow. He was, a uh, believe it or not, we were, so the commercial multifamily space is really small, right? Mm -hmm. And I was, I was at what we called it the breakfast of champions had a whole bunch of high multifamily operators. And I was sitting right next to this guy and he was saying, man, I had this three pack under contract and, you know, we had a good price, 111 million, same as ours. And I was like, he's talking about my deal. And he's like, he's like some a-hole came over and they put $1 million down <laughs> in earnest money because they were only putting $250,000. And so I, I was just like, I'm laughing to myself because he's talking about my deal. Talking about you. <laughs> And so when the dinner, when the breakfast is over, I, I, I walk up to him and say, hey, 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 Meryl, just so you know, because you're going to find out sooner or later, I, I'd rather you hear it from me, but we were the a-holes who put that million dollars down on that deal. And he's, <laughs> like, he's like, I knew it. I knew it was you guys. And that. So it's kind of funny. Wow. Yeah. So these are the owners of the company, Ferris Musa, Ben Suttles. Um, he's the CEO of the company. He's the president of the company and they formed this back in 2016 ish or so. And they've been doing multifamily individually beforehand and they partnered on a couple deals and they're like, man, I really like how you work. And he's like, I like how you work. They got together, created this thing and then they've been growing it ever since. It's been amazing. Wow. So the sponsorship team, um, from open door capital side, I don't know if you've ever heard of bigger pockets before. Mm -hmm. I've heard, I listened to the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So bigger pockets, uh, you probably heard Brandon Turner. Then if you, if you've uh, listened to the podcast, he left bigger pockets in, um, 2021 in December so that he can do his open door capital full time. Oh, wow. Okay. And he did his very, and, no. So with his fun company, he used to only buy mobile home parks. He still does buy mobile okay. home parks, right? Okay. He, loves the, he loves the cash flow model, mm -hmm. but he did his first syndication with Disrupt Equity back in 2021. That was a 532 unit in Houston. And then mm -hmm. I came on in uh, October of 2021. And then my first big syndication with Disrupt was also with Open Door Capital. And it was funny yeah. because I learned real estate from listening to Brandon Turner's podcasts. Wow. Yeah. So it's wow. kind of a cool me. experience. Wow. It's, it's super awesome. I actually haven't even met him yet. I okay. met everybody else. I met Brian Murray, I met Ryan Murdoch. I read all the C-level uh, employees at Open Door Capital, like all the corporate executives. And yeah, I just haven't met Brandon yet. <laughs> the one time I was supposed to meet him, uh, it was funny. The one time I was supposed to go to fly to Seattle where he was going to be at one of our events, um, I had an opportunity. Marvin asked me to speak at P2P. Ah, so I was like, well, I mean, I got to get on stage. I know I want to go shake this guy's hand, but um it was great i got to go on stage and and speak at p2p and yeah, that, that was <laughs> so these are some other um okay. parts of the sponsorship team this is raj gupta anna simpson matt Pichetti, um really cool guys and gal so this is the overview of the investment basically we have built-in diversification because multifamily on its own is already a diverse mm -hmm. uh, entity right because you're not buying just a single family house. You have hundreds of units so that even if one person leaves, or 10 people leaves, you know, you're only going to have like six or 7% vacancy. Mm -hmm. Now, not only do we have diversity within each individual building, we have more diversity because we have three properties. So it doesn't matter if something happens in Houston, maybe it's like weather or a storm or something like that, or just something with like maybe the market with Austin being super hot and then it cools off a little bit. Either way, we are, and none of those things are like um, mm -hmm. stopping. Uh, the growth in these markets because people are just flocking to Texas like crazy. They're leaving Texas. They're leaving all these high uh, cost of living cities and moving mm -hmm. into Texas. A lot of people are moving into Houston and Austin specifically, right? Okay. So we have no single asset risk. We have stabilized returns because one, we're buying it at such a great discount. We have fixed rate debt, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, typically people would buy on bridge loans for the last couple of years. They would buy on uh, adjustable rate mortgages. That have, even if they had a rate cap, right? You buy it at like the, the interest rate was 3%, but interest rates went up eight times last year. So now, even with your rate cap, that's preventing it from going up, the, the rate should be like eight and a half, nine percent, but you're still, at, mm -hmm. you're still at six and a half or six yeah. percent, which yeah. is double from where you were in the beginning. So, you know, your, your returns are a little bit at risk at that point. I actually have a deal <laughs> that we're looking to sell because of that very problem. Not with oh. this problem. Um, Disrupt actually doesn't have any of those issues. 
okay. they're, they're super strong with their um, their cash flow. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other deal that I have out in Florida, it actually is not, it's not the interest rate that's killing us, it's with the insurance. Um, oh. Those hurricanes came through and uh, mm-hmm. if you ever try to look for property insurance in uh, Florida, it's 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 insane like for apartment units they're charging like two two thousand twenty five hundred three thousand dollars per unit per year right Ooh. that's just a, that's not a that's not home insurance that's just a unit right Where you so, and that's for each unit so it's super expensive mm-hmm. yeah so the portfolio summary a summary these are the three uh properties treehouse in austin built in 85 waterstone place in stafford texas built in 2001 and then stone creek in katy texas 1997, 1999. So mm-hmm. that is where all three of these are located. Um, basically, the executive summary on this page, we got, um, we're offering like a seven to nine percent targeted average cash on cash return. Now that is including cash flows and um, when we take the money from uh, cash out refis as well. Your overall amount that you're going to get cash paid to you on the cash that you invest is seven to nine percent. And then an mm-hmm. average annual return about 16 to 18%. And that's pretty conservative considering how we look at it. Cause we beat these deals up before mm-hmm. we get into a deal. Um, fun fact, even though we're targeting average like 16 to 18%, Disrupt mm-hmm. as of like right now in our historic portfolio performance has 50.8%. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? Almost like crypto. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No. But uh, and, I'll, and I'll say this to be to be fair is that that's not sustainable returns. It's not going to be true over the long haul. It only happened because of what happened during COVID, right? Yeah. During COVID, yeah. interest rates fell through the floor, valuations went super high, and we mm-hmm. we sold, took the money and ran, and that was it. Because yeah. it made sense when the valuation got that, got that high. You're getting like over a hundred percent return on a property in one that year. That makes sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah just sell. Right, like yeah. let somebody else say, have have some fun. Go, you go play. Yeah, um, exactly. And those are the guys who bought <laughs> when it went really, really high. Now they had adjustable rate mortgages. Interest rates had gone up, and values are coming down. So they're getting yeah. crushed on both sides. They can't, yeah. they can't cash flow, and they can't sell because they can't get the right price. So it's it, it's in a really tough position. Tough spot. Yeah. So we actually also have our own in-house property management company called uh, Disrupt Management. And from there, uh, we manage all of these assets. Now, not only do we manage all of our own assets in Texas, but we also have a third part. We do third party property management for other other properties as well. We have about um, 6,000 units, right? Okay. And so this is, this is going to be a breakdown of each individual deal. I'll go this kind of fast because there's three deals, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Stone Creek, 208 uh, units. This is a uh, mid eighties vintage. You can tell by the construction on there yeah. in very solid shape. We just finished conducting due diligence and this thing is in phenomenal shape, right? right. So right now it's running about 95% occupancy, which is right where we want it to be. Um, mm-hmm. We are going to go in do our improvements. The square footage is a little bit on the smaller side, but because it's um, because of where it is in in Houston, it's it's kind of competitive. I, th- I would say like the average is 900 feet, but mm-hmm. once we go through and do our rehab plan, we're going to make it uh, nice. Be new. Right. It's going to be super awesome. Okay. So uh, these are some other things about this and I'll, I'll eventually uh, in that link that I sent you. Um, uh-huh. Uh, I can email it to you if you want, if you haven't um, copied it yourself, but you'll get, you'll get this whole entire por- uh, presentation so that you okay. can go through with uh, Herbie and, cool. and talk about the, um, the plan okay. next. because uh-huh. it, multi- multifamily is multifamily. We're buying buildings, they're performing below the market rents, and then we're going to put money into it. We're going to fuse capital, and then we're going to increase the, the rent on it and the valuation, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. because we already bought it at a huge discount, it's going to be like icing on top of icing on top of icing, right? Uh, strategic value at play. There's some really nice, um, what do you call it? Uh, landmark spots over here. So Stone Creek is this, you can't see. Oh, there it is. The one, the yellow pin on that map. And then okay. all, all along the energy corridor, you can see all these different um, important areas of, um, of Houston. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms. 583? 
for a one bedroom one bath. Oh yeah. Small. Wow. For a one bedroom, yeah. That's the that's the smallest one bedroom floor plan. When you have like so certain parts of certain cities, you'll see that what is normal and customary for that part of town okay. is not what you would see anywhere else. Okay, you're in Florida, right? I'm in Florida. Yeah. Parkland or Coral Springs? I'm in Coral Springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're close to me. You gotta go have lunch or something one of these days. We gotta do it. <laughs> um so like uh, I, it's funny. I'm actually looking at a property here in La, um, Lauder Hill Lakes. Oh, okay. And let me show you. Multifamily? Yeah. Oh, okay. We might partner on it. But, <laughs> but check this out. The one, their one bedrooms are 650 oh. and two bedrooms are 800. Really? Yeah. Oh. So it just depends. That's small for Florida too. But yeah, a lot, lot of Hill Lakes is not like not like the the, the happening spot. It's definitely gonna be a value <laughs> add play over there for sure. Um, but yeah, so I mean, uh, unit amenities, the granite stuff, all that other good stuff. Property overview. These are just some of the pictures, just so you can see the condition of how the property is. It's in pretty good shape. It's nice. It's very nice. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like when we when we do due diligence, we're like. Is the property already done, right? But these are like, this is like the model room, right? This isn't like okay. a typical unit yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. So rent comparable analysis. So you can just see um, the average rent from our comparables are about 1300 and we are at 1100 And the market premium that we can get um, okay. is about 423 Okay. Honestly, yeah, look at that. Because I think they're comparing from Stone Creek to Mason Park is what that looks like. But for the, for the average, I don't think it's, it's that much. But potentially, we can get up that high. And same thing on the, um, same thing on the, what do you call it, on the two-bedroom side. Maybe about 386 market premium. So the average is 1688. Obviously, once we do renovations, we're going to be above market. We only underwrite to the market, just so you know. Uh, okay. And that's why that's why we end up overperforming on our Good. performance because yeah. we're shooting we're shooting for the moon. If we miss, then we'll land among the stars. We'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. So these are just you, know, you see these maps. They'll show you all of the good things that are around it. The big things that I look for whenever I buy a property. I want to see where is Starbucks. I don't care about Walmart. That's not a good one. Home Depot is a good one. Uh, mm -hmm. Costco is a great one. Okay. And out there in the Midwest, HEB is a good uh, grocery store. Okay. Pay attention to. But these are the kinds of stores um, that you you kind of want to see. Um, he's a community college. What else? Anything else that stands out? That's really, really maybe good. maybe hospital. Do you check to see if hospitals are nearby, or is that that's not yeah. important? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, UT Health is a physician. This is like, I think this is a school. Okay. Um, for, uh, I don't even know, University of Texas, Houston. So mm -hmm. that's where, it's like a medical school that's there. And then we have the okay. Children's Hospital and um, all that stuff over here too. But my big things are, like my things are nationwide retailers who do lots of research to figure out where do they want to build their locations because they're paying a ton of money. They put a lot into advertising and they're going to put these stores in places where they know they're going to get a lot of traffic. Mm. So my cheat code, I don't care about all these companies. I care about Starbucks. I care about uh, uh, Costco. Right? <laughs> and they're both like, you know, a hop, skip and a jump away. Not really far. Okay. Right. Um, uh, market demographics. I mean, just the sub market alone has 727,000 people. Mm -hmm. right? uh, 40% of them are highly educated with bachelor's degrees or more. And median home price is 250. And the income is what I'm talking about. That's how much money the, the average household is pulling in. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about rents of like 1100 or 1300, it's not going to be a stressor to them. Versus mm -hmm. if you buy, if you're looking at a deal and you look at the market um, income levels and people are making like 30,000 or 40,000, I just got through looking at a deal where the median household income was $19,000. And it's going to buy the property. I'm like, all right, well, good luck to you. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to. You have, you would have problem paying their rent. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about multifamily, you want to be able to find a place where there is limited housing 
in way too many people. And the fact that so many people are, are flocking to Texas like crazy, that mm -hmm. is what's driving the demand really high, which makes it very easy for us to be able to get these rents. So mm -hmm. yeah, you have 727,000 people trying to cram into this you know, one location. Yeah. So that was the first property. The second property, I know I said I was gonna go fast and I didn't go that fast, but <laughs> Waterstone Place, pretty much uh, more of the same. You can uh, you can just see like these are bigger units, a thousand oh, square feet on average. Mm -hmm. So it's 84 yeah. buildings, 168 units, um, built in 2001. So it's, it's actually the newest one in this whole portfolio, higher occupied and mm -hmm. the rents are, uh, are higher as well. Okay. So I'll show you at Vegas Play. You can see where this one is located um, compared to the Energy Corridor, which is up this way, right by the number three. I'm trying to point, but you can't see my screen. <laughs> and, my, and my mouse is disappearing. Um, what else do we have? Some other amenities. Let's see if we can get the picture of this place so you can see what it looks like. So yeah, nice, newer, upgraded. You got a playground, leasing center, very well manicured lawn. You know, you, yeah. can, you can tell when, a, when a, um, an owner takes care of their property based mm -hmm. on how they keep the landscaping. I mean, they got mulch and flowers and all of the stuff like, you know, yeah. people who don't care about their property are not going to take the time to do all those little mm -hmm. things like that. So the rent comparable analysis for here, um, average rents in this market, like this sub market is like kind of close to a place called Sugarland, which is really pricey. And you can see like the rents that are going around here, average 1900. And we're looking at 1635. And on the high end for market premium, like mm. 2301, if we can go ahead and do those really nice um, upgrades and stuff, those nice upgrades and everything, then oh. we can go ahead and possibly get our rents up that high. Mm -hmm. And again, once I get over here, let's see, Waterstone, uh, Waterstone Place is this whole community part right here. What do I look for? Starbucks right here, <laughs> right? Oh, and I get my Costco. I mean, I'm, ah. I'm set. Right, this is a little bit of a southern area, and then there's another Starbucks twofer. Yeah. If Starbucks is building on both sides of my property, I don't, need to know, I don't need to know anything else. That's my market research. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly true, but still, you can see yeah. the average income here is even higher than the other property. The sub market in this area is at 1 million people, and uh, median uh, sell price for homes is going to be about $255,000 and a little, slightly higher education level and a little bit less um, renter occupied um, in this part because people make a little bit more money. Yeah. This, this is more of a residential like um, yeah. home area yeah. Yeah, versus the other place that had a lot more apartment buildings. Okay. Renters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sugarland. So I was actually debating whether I should move to Houston um, a while back. And wow. uh, I was driving around looking at houses, going to open houses in Sugarland with my wife and my kids. So. Oh, okay. oh, so you know the area. Oh, yeah. I wanted to... It's a little bit far out from where the firm is for me. Okay. Uh, it's still on the west side, so I, yeah. I don't like a long commute. I will live across the street from my job if I if I was going to do that. <laughs> right. So market overview here in Houston, Texas, Stone Creek Disrupt Equity is located right over here. Um, I stay at the Marriott that's right over here whenever I come into town, and then mm -hmm. Katie's over here. We have a, another property called Heights on Katie, and then Waterstones mm -hmm. down here by Sugarland. And this is mm. downtown. And not too far, not too far from each other. Not at all. Okay. No, and we and I'm telling you, like, and these guys are road warriors. They drive to Dallas. They drive to San Antonio so that we can go check on our assets out there as well. It's all and all of the whole Texas Triangle they call it is Dallas, mm -hmm. Houston, Austin is the Dallas mm -hmm. is the Dallas Triangle. And then you know if you go a little bit further down, uh, San Antonio is right there, about an hour away from uh, hour or two away from Austin. So they're pretty close. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the Texas Triangle has a lot of good properties or yeah. cities. So number one, most, uh, most recovered from COVID, poised for growth, Houston, Texas, second highest projected population growth and top 10 real estate markets in 2021, fastest growing tech hubs amid the pandemic because everybody was trying to go virtual and Houston like just locked it up. They were just killing it. Um, okay. And a lot of people don't realize that when COVID happened, all the ports in the country shut down except for the port of Houston. So during the, the pandemic, that's what kept that city thriving and growing and, and hustling and bustling because people would have to come in through that port of Houston and like ships were waiting at sea for their chance to, to dock into port so they can deliver their goods and do their stuff. So Houston was, was pretty amazing. Yeah, I learned a lot of stuff about Houston. 
So being re recession resistant, a, a, a big thing that you want to look for when deciding what market you want to invest in is um, employer diversity, right? And you can see that there's all these different sectors of employment. The reason why that's so important, let's just say like there's a town, like a military town. I'm sure you've heard of cities that are like, they, they live on, they thrive on um, on the local military yes. to come through and those people are there. So what ha I remember there was this one city, uh, Sumter, South Carolina. Um, mm -hmm. I was looking to do my first deal and I found 36 units out there. Um, the price was right. Everything looked good on the property, but uh, there was like really low employment. And I'm like, why, why is it so like such a dead town? The numbers look good, but I can't buy there because there's not enough um, people making mm -hmm. money. And I got to talking to one of the locals uh, who happened to be a contractor for one of my friends who used to live in Sumter. Okay. He said that um, Sumter was a big military town. Air Force Base was out there. And um, after the war was over, they shut down Sumter Air Force Base. Ooh, and, then, and, then the every, economy and, everybody, and then everybody left. And now the wow. city is a struggling city. And so that's Ooh. why that's why it's so important. Like you never want for like mm -hmm. if something happens to just one company, like who cares if it's if it's uh, you know, transportation's huge out there and utilities obviously because of the oil and whatnot. But like mm -hmm. if anything happens to the information sector and nobody does information, which is probably not likely and given that we're in 2023 and technology and AI and all this other stuff. But let's just say the AI sector gets shut down. It's only 1% of the market. There's still 99% yeah. other employment sectors out there that are going to be um, helping people um, mm -hmm. earn income and do what they got to do. So there's so much uh, that they get to, um, uh, they, they have propping up that city, right? Mm -hmm. So Treehouse is the third property uh in austin texas 297 units and this one has a 700 square foot average unit size now austin is very much kind of like the la of texas right mm, and okay. so the smaller unit size i've noticed don't really affect people too much okay like they they still pay premiums for for being in good quality housing down there because austin i think is the most expensive city in um texas in texas yeah so phenomenally rapidly growing. Everybody knows about Austin growing. Well, I just told you about Austin, but mm -hmm. it's, it's been a big boom. Austin also happens to be kind of like politically left leaning. Like they're more mm -hmm. liberal in Austin than they are in more, most of the places. That's why I call it the LA of, of Texas. As mm -hmm. well. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have studios, ones, ones, twos, and twos. There's no three okay. bedrooms in this one. So that's, that also accounts for the smaller, um, unit size Square as well. Mm -hmm. So property overview, still in good space, uh, in good shape. We need to definitely get rid of that weird green color on that leasing office. Uh, I personally don't like it. I like this blue. I like that, the blue and the brown. That's a, that's a good combo. Um, yeah. Some of the uh, rent comparable studies. So you can see uh, the array is our other property that we have. We just bought that one last year. So we're going to be taking this one and treehouse and bumping our rents up um, to keep up with what the market demand is. We can get a market okay. premium of uh, 343 over there on the one bedrooms, but on the two bedrooms where we have like the most opportunity. So okay. we're about 1400 already for array, which we are collecting at 1609. So we already know that we have at least um, a little bit of room there. And then mm -hmm. uh, the high end is going to be the, the aspect with their 2130 okay. rents, okay. right? So again, I always look for my Costco, my Starbucks. That makes me happy. Like literally, when I'm when we're looking at a property, we're we're sitting there, we're all looking at the spreadsheet. I'll um, and if the numbers work, right? I'm like, first off, let me go ahead, put the address of the property in there, and then search for Starbucks. That's mm -hmm. what I do. And then if it's five minutes away or less, I give it a thumbs up. That's like wow. my, my icing on the cake. So as long as the, as long as there's a Starbucks nearby and that there is um, uh, the numbers work financially, I'm good to go. It's good to go. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, it's just I mean, it's just kind of like common sense. If if Starbucks is going to be in a location, then it's cool. Especially if if they're co-located within like the same I guess barriers. Well, uh, I call barriers on a map like highways main roads, rivers and canals or anything like that, bodies of water, 
all those things are dividing. So if there's nothing in between my property and Starbucks, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. You're good. Okay. And if it's within five minutes away. Mm -hmm. All right. Blooming apartment fundamentals. I mean, the population growth from 2010 to 2022 is insane. 27%. That's like there was like, uh, you know, four people around and then now there's five people around. Okay. Right? Like a whole other person just showed up to grow there. And the median home sale price. Like, Ooh, that's yeah. expensive. That's what I'm saying. Austin is, like I said, the LA of Texas. It's crazy how wow. expensive houses are over there. Um, mm. 43% have a bachelor's degree, 68% have our white collar employees, meaning that, you know, high level uh, jobs and everything, yeah. like IT, tech, mm -hmm. medical, and mm -hmm. population growth is just still continuing to grow like crazy. Mm -hmm. So this is the details of the portfolio itself. We're doing a 506C, Regulation D, multifamily portfolio from Open Door and Disrupt Equity. As a class, we're using a B and um, B and C multifamily apartments, which are you familiar with uh, asset classes? Mm -hmm. So. A class is going to be like, think about Brickle, right? Okay. You know, these okay. High rises, super nice. And that's uh -huh. an A class. And then when you okay. want to think of like D class, think of like Liberty City, right? Okay, got it. Okay. So that's D class. And then B and C are like right in the middle. C class yeah. is kind of like working class. B class might be like blue collar uh, labor, yeah. something like that. And then A class is like the, the most expensive living. Okay. So A class sounds like it's a nice thing. But it costs so much to buy those properties, and the cash flow is so low, yeah. it doesn't make sense to put more money into it to try to squeeze out just a little bit more rent. You don't get a lot of cash flow on that. But mm -hmm. on the um, on the B and C properties, that's where we do our value add, where we're able to go ahead and take those improvements and make them. Like you can take a C class property that's located in a nice area and turn it to a B class property, okay. and then all of a sudden the value goes up. And then you can take a B and turn it to a B plus. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like A plus A, A minus, B plus okay. B, B minus, C plus C, C minus. And then okay. I don't I don't know if I've ever heard of a D plus area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like getting like a D plus on a test. Like, thanks, teacher. I know, right? <laughs> so we're, worst case scenario, we're planning on holding it for up to 10 years. Okay. We just, we just don't know what's happening in the market. But again, okay. Historically, we have never held anything longer than three years. Mm, okay. to, right? Because the, the market is appreciated like crazy. For right mm -hmm. now, if if there are turbulent times, like again, our debt, we have seven years of interest only. Maybe we, mm -hmm. we don't have no principal payments on this property whatsoever. Right. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have the hundred minute hundred thousand minimum uh, investment. And um, there are multiple class structures for here. So the way the classes work in multifamily syndications is the property will collect the rents and then we pay our expenses and the amount left over is called our net operating income, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After our net operating income, we use that to pay uh, the bank. We have to okay. pay them the mortgage note. So that cash that's left over is our net net income. So out of that net net income, we will distribute that to the investors according to their class structure. So it's the property first, the bank is first in line to get the payments, and then the investors who are in the A-class position. The A-class position, class A structure, means that you're making 10% on your money first before any other class of investor, but you get no upside on the back end. So when the value is improved and we go to sell, all you're making is 10% on your money. You put in um a hundred thousand dollars and we hold it for five years you're making ten thousand dollars every single month or every single year sorry not every month every year mm -hmm. yeah every month would be great oh <laughs> that's 120 percent right? i know okay. but you're making 10 percent on your money year over year after the class a gets paid their 10 percent, then the remainder remainder goes um uh to the class b they earn eight percent of their money first before anybody else gets paid Okay. And then after they get their 8%, then we do a split 70% to the investors, 30% to us as the operators. Okay. Right. And mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what we call the typical waterfall structure, the way the money flows down and mm -hmm. trickles to everybody else. Right. Um, at the end of our business plan projected conservatively, 
we're looking to achieve about 16 to 18% average returns and then 7 to 9% cash on cash in, in paid out in distributions on a monthly basis. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, distributions are done quarterly, like uh, once every three months. But mm -hmm. in this particular deal, because we have so much um, uh, down payment, so much equity into the, into the thing, we can cash flow really fast. So our, our distributions are, are, are projected to start within six months. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So distribution paid monthly, begin about six months after closing. And then cost segregation studies will be performed, allowing investors to benefit from an estimated 25 to 45% bonus depreciation. So okay. this was where I uh, helped school Latoya a little bit on some tax savings measures. And she was super excited. Like, you know, she does the insurance and she's uh, yes. Uh, yes. all about tax-free living and whatnot. So when I explained how bonus depreciation worked, she was like head over heels. She was like, I love this, this is amazing. So. <laughs> Really quick, let me explain to you how depreciation works. Do you know what depreciation is? No, tell me, no. Okay, so anytime you buy any type of residential real estate, whether it's commercial mm -hmm. or you know residential, one, two, three, four units, it is IRS law that that property is um, depreciated over a schedule of 27 and a half years, okay. right? So let's just say you buy a single family house for $270,000 or $275,000. That means every year you take a paper loss, not a, not a physical loss, you don't owe any money. You're losing $10,000 of value on that property mm -hmm. for 27 and a half years. And then that's when the, the depreciation schedule is zero, right? Mm -hmm. In apartment buildings, it's the same thing. However, we conduct what's called the cost segregation study, which is where we have a tax professional who is, you know, they specify in this type of work. They will take uh, the property as a whole. So let's say we're buying a property, an apartment building for $1 million. Mm -hmm. They're gonna back out the land portion of it, call it $200,000. And now we're looking at $800,000 of what they call improvements, right? Okay. That's the building itself. Mm -hmm. Now that building isn't just the building. There's a lot of components that go into it, which is why we do the segregation. We, we take a, we take, we, the, the professional takes a, a look at that property and tears it apart piece by piece. Like you have okay. siding over here, you have wood, you have these materials, you have HVAC, you have condensers, mm -hmm. you have water heaters, you have all these other things. They don't last 27 and a half years. And so mm -hmm. by the time he's done with it, he'll take that $800,000 property, that improvement and say, hey, you know what? It's actually only, um, only 300,000 of it or 400,000 of it is uh, improvements that are actually buildings that can be depreciated over 27 and a half years. So you still get your straight line depreciation over, depreciation over here, but the other four or $500,000 is all this other stuff that depreciates instead of 27 and a half years, it's only done like on maybe 10 to 15 years in the long end. Some things are even shorter, like one year, right? So all mm -hmm. in all, we're able to condense 27 and a half years of um, depreciation and accelerate that depreciation down into like five years, right on average, and then we can we can take by law that first year the majority of that depreciation. Okay. okay. So when we talk about a twenty five to forty five percent bonus depreciation, we're saying that you invest one hundred thousand dollars into this deal, you will have losses from twenty five to forty five thousand dollars to offset your passive gains. Right. The first year. Yes. And then whatever doesn't get used rolls into the next year. Wow. Okay. So that's wow. how most depreciation works. And yeah. full disclosure, because mm -hmm. not everything is, that's, that's, you know, glitter, anything, not yeah. everything that gold, glitters. Everything, gold. Shine that, everything that shines in that glitter or something like that. But I know. <laughs> not everything that glitters is gold, right? It's gold. So, uh -huh. It is a benefit that you're able to write off and not have to pay taxes, but you're only deferring your taxes until you sell this property, right? Mm -hmm. So when you yeah. sell the property, there is a recapture of the depreciation that you claimed on that property. Mm -hmm. But a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. Yeah. So even mm -hmm. if you're paying the same tax amount that you would have been paying, if you paid it later on when you had more money, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. relative to what the money was worth, you know, three to five years ago, mm -hmm. you're paying a lower tax amount of your overall net worth and okay. you're able to grow your net worth um, mm -hmm. during the same period, right? Okay. Okay. And then even if you have that tax hit, you invest into other deals and you have more depreciation to offset it. Yeah, it worked out in the end, right? yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then as long as you're not out there 
taking the money and then spending it as soon as you get it, right? If you if you com if you recurrently recurringly invest into multifamily syndications, eventually you'll build up an, a big enough nest egg where you can just go ahead and do instead of doing a, a passive syndication deal, mm -hmm. you can go out and and buy a deal on your own, mm -hmm. or as a as a joint venture partner like you and I, we just get together and say, mm -hmm. hey. Mm -hmm. Like that one deal I showed you that I was looking at, like we want to buy that one for about $9.8 million or $9.3 mm -hmm. is what they're asking for. Um, I'm definitely going to shut that down. But, <laughs> but if they take my offer or wherever we can get it at, then I will, um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll get a few partners because I probably only need about $4 million. Mm -hmm. And I have some, some heavy investors who are like, they're looking for something. And then we can just partner, mm -hmm. just split the equity evenly. And then once we buy something like that, now, when we do our value add, we can take that money and do what's called a 1031 exchange. So you right. buy another one? So, yeah, when we sell that property, we take the proceeds, uh, we uh -huh. take all we put into it, plus the profits, roll it all together, uh -huh. and buy another property, and we pay no taxes on it. You don't have to pay taxes, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they say uh, 1031 till you die. Okay. Right? Because when you, when you die, when you have a 1031 active, and the property mm -hmm. goes into your um, to your heirs, mm -hmm. they receive it with a stepped up basis. So all the taxable amount gets wiped out once they receive oh. the property. Oh, wow. With a 1031. My yeah. God, so much to know. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so wow. when people understand how this works, they realize like, sure, you can make a lot of money in your in your crypto and your stocks and this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Not only is it high risk, but you have no tax advantages. Oh. Right, because when you start pulling, all, when, you, when you start pulling all that cash out, I mean, you, mm -hmm. you're trying, you're trying to not to. Uh, you, if you're pulling out half a million dollars a year, as an example, right, mm -hmm. you're paying like fifty five percent taxes. Fifty percent taxes. It's, it's crazy. It's mm -hmm. nuts. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, your returns are a lot higher. Your risk is a lot higher. Your tax advantages are very low. And mm -hmm. so, if you're, as I said, slow and steady wins the race with real estate. Right. For sure. It's not get rich quick, but it's get yeah. wealthy for sure. For sure. For sure. Right. So let's talk about those classes. Can can you can you back yeah. one slide real quick? So basically those um class, the structures, uh an investor get to choose. Um yeah. you can you can okay. pick I want to be class A, I want to be class B, however you want. Okay. And I'll tell you the way the math works out on your investment. If you're in class A, you will make more cash flow, you will make less overall return if uh -huh. you're in class b you will make less cash flow but you will make more overall return you'll make more money in the back end so it depends if you're somebody who's like hey i'm trying to grow my portfolio and increase my net worth over and over and over you want to be mm -hmm. class b that's where i would be personally for me mm -hmm. but class if b. you're somebody who's like hey i already have you know millions and millions of dollars all i want to do is make sure that it's growing at a good rate and um, I have my tax benefits, all that stuff, and I just want a little bit of cash flow. I don't need it to grow anymore because I already have like five or ten million bucks. I'm good. Yeah. Then you do class A. Do some cash flow. So class A, you get your monthly, monthly return. They both do. Yearly. Yearly. No, no, no. They both get monthly returns. Okay, but for the year you get ten percent. That's that's Correct. for the year. Correct. That's all you're gonna get. So once this, once the property is sold, let's say you, it's, you keep it for like five years. Yeah. So you get your 10% yearly, but when the property is sold, you don't get to share in the, in the, in the profit. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. You only get 10% and then there's no upside. Mm -hmm. So, so here's, here's, here's an example, right? So let's just okay. say, let's just say that we're buying a really small apartment building and you needed $100,000 to buy it in equity, right? Mm -hmm. So Mr. Investor comes up, writes a check for $100,000 and he's like, I only want 10% of my money. So we, uh, on a $100,000 purchase, we're buying maybe a $500,000 property. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that we were able to take that property from $500,000 and we increase the value to a million dollars. We double the value of that property. So when it comes time, and, and, and it took five years to do so, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to time to sell, we have $500,000 in profit, mm -hmm. right? We got to give $100,000 back to the investor. So there's $400,000 left plus the 10% that they made for every five years over the five years. So that's another 50% of their okay. investment. So they're going to get $50,000. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
So now there's 350,000 to the investor or to the operators and then 150,000 to the investor. So he made 50% on his money, 10% year over year. Yeah, got it. So in that scenario we're looking at right now, let's say someone invests a thousand dollars. You want to go with class A structure. You get ten thousand dollars a year because you get ten percent um per year. Right. So you get ten thousand dollars a year for five years if you were to keep the property for five years. Then right. when you sell at the end of the five years, that person would just get a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, return of their capital. And then yeah, okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like a it's like a CD at ten percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got right. it. Um, and then the class B is percent eight percent on their money. Okay, eight percent per year, and then and then you get to share seventy percent of the profits, mm -hmm. and then thirty percent goes to the management team. Got it. Right. Okay. And then but this one you get a little bit more on your money overall. Yes. You mm -hmm. make you'll make more money in the back end, less money while the property is running. Got it. So it's technically a higher risk position, mm -hmm. just because. Mm -hmm. You're waiting for the yeah. end to get. <laughs> well, let's let's just say let's just say something crazy happens in the market and the values tank. Yeah. Like eighty percent, and mm -hmm. every real estate deal just crashes, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even this one, which is you know, it's a tank. Mm -hmm. um, if that were to happen, then everybody loses their money, but the class A guys have been getting paid at least 10%. So if that yeah, happened, yeah. if that happened yeah. three years in, they still walk away with $30,000. Yeah, yep. And these guys mm -hmm. walk away with nothing. Nothing. Or whatever little bit they were paid. Oh, yeah. Way, way less. Yeah. And because because here's the thing. When you look at these buildings, there is not that much cash flow. There's in the beginning because we're we're doing value add. We're paying money to increase the renovations, and mm -hmm. and when tenants move out, we we improve the building, improve the unit, and then we could charge a new rent on that one unit, mm -hmm. right? So it's a slow process. It takes like two and a half, three years to fully yeah. turn over a full property. Yes, yes, because so you can go in and raise the price on everybody. Yeah, exactly it's, right. It, process uh -huh. it's a it's a it's yeah. a it takes some time so yeah. so what happens is let's just say we pay the 10 percent to the class a let's say we don't pay the 10 percent to the class a let's say there's only enough money in the beginning because um even though we got a really good deal the insurance is still expensive the, the mortgage is really expensive because it's a huge property and we can we only have enough money to pay 8% to the class A shares. Mm -hmm. So we owe them two. And then we owe class B eight because they get mm -hmm. zero dollars. Yeah. There's no money. There's only enough mm -hmm. to pay 8% to these guys. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So the way that that works is we accrue the amount that we would have had to pay you. So let's just say at some point interest rates come back down. And it makes sense to do a cash out refi because the value of the property for some of the renovations that we did has increased the value of that property, right? So we're able to pull out, say, 50% of the investor capital. So what we'll do first is we'll pay the 10% guys the 2% that they were missing for every year that we were that we were behind. So we have a catch up for them. After they're made whole, next in line to get their money is the class B guys who are going to get 8% on their money first. So once all the class B guys are paid 8%, then whatever's left over gets shared 70% to the class B, 30% to the, the operators. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're at the very bottom of the list. Uh, naturally, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. But that's generally how a typical multifamily deal would work. Mm -hmm. So okay. like, sometimes, especially when you're doing a value add deal, the cash flow isn't always there up front. Or if you're buying a class A, like really low cap property, you're not going to make 10% cash on cash. It just, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Like 10% cash on cash used to be a thing maybe in like 2016, 2017. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. maybe you can get it done right now. If you're direct to seller on a smaller, like maybe 30 or 40 unit property. Okay. You direct a seller and you have them carry carry a note at like five percent, mm -hmm. right? well below whatever interest rates are standard right now. 
because they're like, oh, you know what? Maybe they don't want to pay taxes and they don't want to do a 1031 because they don't want to pay like a, a fee for it or whatever. Yeah. They're just like, I'll take the money later. I don't need the money right now. Just I'll, they'll keep it in the property as an annuity. So they're making 5% preferred returns for their money, technically. That's how we're looking at it, right? And that's how people buy apartment buildings with zero money down. Because mm, okay. right? if the bank is going to give me 75% of the, of the value and the seller is going to bring me the other 25%, that's all the money I need. Okay. So then all I need to bring is money for renovation, which I can probably do through like a hard money loan. Wow. So, um, I'll, I'll take the hard money loan, do the renovations on the, on the property, take that property from, let's just say if it's a 30 unit somewhere, it might cost $1.5 million. I'll improve that property and make it uh, be worth like $2.3 million. So I'll create $800,000 in value, 25% of that 1.5, what is that? 0.25 times 1.5. Um, I'll pay the uh, the seller his three hundred seventy five thousand dollars back, right? I've been paying him interest the whole entire time from the from the property cash flow, so that's fine. And then three hundred seventy five minus the eight hundred, or minus eight, I should say. So I have I still have an additional oh wait, plus eight minus eight. Um, I still have an additional four hundred and twenty five thousand dollars that is gonna to profit to me. So when you buy a property, no money down, minus my renovations, maybe I put $100,000 into it or something. So I'm still walking away with like 300,000 or something like that. Um, the yep. Right? So that's that's typically the matter. I should do a course on how, how all that works. <laughs> um, but that, I mean, I'm giving you the whole entire breakdown of how a multifamily syndication waterfall structure works for the different um, classes that are involved. And you can choose as the investor, say, hey, I have five, I have $100,000, I wanna put 50 in class A, 50 in class B. So then now you're getting 10% on 50,000 and you're gonna get the upside on the other 50,000. Oh, you can do it like that, you can split it. You can, you can choose. Oh, okay. But for me, I would I would never choose this. Not until I get old. <laughs> like when I get old and that's all I wanna do, especially on a deal like this where I mean, the risk, the risk of loss on a deal like this is, is, is the lowest I've ever seen because okay. we're walking in assuming 3% interest, right? Mm -hmm. And we have it for seven years. Um, yeah. So, and this is a, this is like a little chart that shows you what it looks like. If you invest mm -hmm. um, uh, the class C capital balance. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there was a class C. Are you talking about the same thing, the deal structure? Yeah, I think this is just showing the total okay. balance of the uh, uh, of the investor, right? As an example. Okay, okay, okay. So one million dollars, mm -hmm. they're gonna get distributions from operations in year one, and so this is showing you, right? Because we average mm -hmm. seven point seven one, but in year one, we're doing a renovation, so we don't have a lot of money to pay out. We haven't oh, increased the rents yet, right? Mm -hmm. And then year two, you see it starts slowly, steadily climbing, mm -hmm. right? And then after year seven, we're gonna go ahead and get about ten percent cash on cash, and then these are the returns on that money. Mm -hmm. And then profit from the sale, they're gonna get uh, six hundred fifty-nine thousand um, dollars total profits, right? So their total cash flows is going to be the oh, this is cumulative down here, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 34 here, so year one, 34,000 here, year two, you're making the 57,000, so on and so forth. And then in year seven, you're going to get $103,000 plus your return of the million dollars that you had invested. And then your upside on the pro on the property of uh, 659,000, which comes up to that $1.7 million. Okay. So your overall return is 1.1 million, which is how we get to that 17.13% AAR, average annual return. You have an equity multiple of 2.2. .2. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Right. Cause you have, a, you have $1 million turning into $1.19 million in profits on the back end. Hmm. Pretty cool. Uh, this is a sensitivity analysis. This just shows like what happens at different levels. Like we're, we're saying, Hey, 10% economic vacancy, worst case scenario, interest rate, uh, inflation rate is 3% for the rents which is pretty conservative. I know, I know a lot of people, especially in booming markets, are putting a lot higher numbers than that. But we're just saying, if it's 3%, 10% vacancy, which is very conservative, 
this property right now is running 95, 95, 96% on average uh, between two of them. And the, the cap rate, capitalization rate for that market is 5%. It could swing five points either way, uh, depending on what happens in the market. We imagine that it's going to go up a little bit and then come back down when the market stabilizes. So we're just saying 5% on average. That'll hit, get us to 17.11. Worst case scenario, our occupancy falls through the floor. Uh, our exit cap rate is, is as high as we can project it to be. And um, our stabilized rent growth is a little bit higher because if those things are happening in the market, interest rates are typically higher. Um, we're still looking at 13.3% out of January returns. It's not bad at all, right? So investors had the opportunity to invest in class A or class B. It can also split their investment between both classes, allowing for blended risk adjusted return. That's what I was telling you. You can choose, I want A or B, however you want to do it. So we're borrowing 68 million and we're raising 57 million mm. right, from investors, $100,000 minimums. That's why it's $100,000 minimum because it's such a really large raise. Okay. Right, so capital improvements. This is where we're gonna spend our money that we're raising from you guys. Uh, Stone Creek, Waterstone, Treehouse. We're gonna be putting 3 million into the, um, into the exterior property, 550,000 for the amenities and $2.8 million for the inside. Total um, amount is gonna be 6.3 million. So we're putting about $9,500 a door into renovations for this property, right? That's for all three. All, all three, three combined, yeah. And then the fees, the sources, and the uses, um, the preferred returns, we saw the class A, class B. Um, there's no split for the class A. The class B has the 70-30. And then as a performance incentive, if we're able to hit that 15% internal rate of return for the um, LPs, limited partners, then the deals changes from 70-30. It says, hey, we're doing a good job, so now we're gonna get a little bit more. So now it's 50-50. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. It's, it's called a, um, a promote, 50%. Um, yeah, promote. It's like an incentive for us to be able to hit that target, right? Gotcha, okay. And then property management. They, but then the investors, they still get a 50% of more. Oh yeah, yeah, only the class B, they get 50%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Instead of 70, they get 50, but it's a 50 of a bigger pot. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because we're making we're, we're making more profits, right? Yes, yes. So that's the that's the king there. Mm -hmm. uh, property management fee for district management is 3%. Asset management fee, this is 2% that goes to uh, district equity for at, at Open Door Capital for managing the ongoing asset over the next seven years. Yeah. Acquisition fee is 2%. <laughs> On close, that is that is the way that us as syndicators get paid up front okay. in order to be able to do these deals, right? Because okay. you gotta think we're buying this property and it's gonna be running for the next seven years. Uh -huh. So you need something in, in in the front end to be able to keep the lights on. And gotcha. energy fee goes to everybody in the team. That's how I personally get paid. And okay. capital transaction fees are anytime there's a capital event, uh, purchase, cash out refi, or sale. Right, no. that's with a uh, capital fees. Anytime there's something with a with a loan involved, we're gonna get sixty eight from a loan, fifty seven million from investors, total of one hundred twenty five million dollars to do our purchase and a rehab, and then we're mm -hmm. spending one hundred eleven on uh, the purchase. Closing costs are five point three. I wish I was the lender. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have repairs and reserves, uh, eight point six million. Mm. So that's where the one point two five uh, one hundred twenty five million goes to. Okay. So. Every um, every time Disrupt does a deal, we have a charity called Disrupt Gives. And in this investment offering, the management team is giving 25% of the asset management fee to be passed through for this charity, right? And that actually provides rental assistance and financial education to residents. And it's oh. open to all of our assets, not just the Disrupt management ones. Okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, I like that. I'm sorry? I like that. I like that you guys are like, you know, giving back, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. So, so the charity is a really big part of what we do. And I'm, you know, me, I, I love coaching to TG people, financial education. So that's huge. Um, so the track record, these are uh, the deals that we sold, you know, they had over 10,000 um, units managed across uh, the, the portfolios. Uh, you can see the returns here, 50%, 50%, 100% on Huntington Park in Beaumont, 40% at Stone Mountain. 
36 okay. at uh, Central Park, Marketplace 35 and 20. So this Huntington Park one is definitely one that, you know, we got crazy returns on. This is actually in 2018, so. Uh, oh, wow, before COVID, huh? Before COVID, yeah. And we got like a lot of awesome returns. Okay. So the way that the process works, you review the offering, which is what this is that we're looking at right now. You sign into the portal, the link that I gave you. And mm -hmm. um, the first thing you should do, if you haven't filled out the investor profile form to get your information in there, mm -hmm. uh, sign these, uh, sign the documents for the offering. Mm -hmm. And then whenever, you, whenever the uh, documents are signed and everything's approved, then you do the wiring. The wiring mm -hmm. uh, instructions are inside the investor portal as well. And then once we close, I mean, your yeah. job is done. Your money is out working for you. Yep. Going ahead and yep. sounds familiar. Money. We went through that process. <laughs> yeah, I'm recording, so I'm making like a, I'm going to use this as a video for something. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. It's all right. I got it. I got an editor. He's going to fix everything. Okay, you can edit. Okay, okay, all right. So yeah, the investment criteria, obviously, um, because of the nature of this deal being a 506 C offering, it's open only to accredited investors who have a million dollar net worth, or if they have an income requirement of $200,000 for the past two years, or 300,000 if they've been married, um, you can invest through your SDIRA, self-directed IRA, solo 401k, EQRP. Um, there's a few 1031s that we will accept. Um, okay. And I think most of them are already spoken for right now. And then the minimum investment obviously is hundred thousand dollars, and it's first, it's first come, first funded, right? First, mm -hmm. first funded, first serve. I should say, just because somebody signs up first, if they're the last person to put their money into the deal and it's already full, then it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if you're first. It's mm -hmm. always done by whoever wires their money. I can't tell yeah. you how people sign the sign the documents and then they just sit there and like, oh yeah, I got busy, mm -hmm. I forgot. And mm -hmm. one of our deals filled up so fast, like I didn't even have twenty four hours. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It was a it was a little bit of a smaller deal. I think we were I mean I say smaller, but it's twenty one million dollars raised in twenty four hours. Oh. Mm. Yeah. yeah, Brandon Turner is so when is this gonna be open? It opens on Monday. Oh Monday. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. If you're mm -hmm. in, commit, yeah. sign the documents. Um, you need accredited investor verification. There, okay. is, there's a few ways to go ahead and do that. And inside the investor portal, they have options for you to verify mm -hmm. that. The easiest way to do it is talk to your CPA and say, hey, can you give me a letter of accreditation saying mm -hmm. that I'm an accredited investor? They will sign on it and then you can use that as like, hey, here's my proof that I'm an accredited investor. Okay. Um, that, that's a, a, a non-negotiable, you have to do that because the SEC only allows for accredited investors and we need documentation proving that you are an accredited investor. Got it, okay. Um, and then obviously funding, you send the wire in. Mm -hmm. So some frequently asked questions that people have, can I invest using a self-directed IRA? Yes, you can. As a matter of fact, I'm quitting my job on Monday. I'm gonna take my TSP and roll it over into a self-directed IRA. Oh and my God, it's happening. It's happening. I know I talked about it for a while, right? But <laughs> thank you. I'm, I'm getting it done. I'm gonna go do that. And then okay. when the distribution start, um, we're gonna start about six full months after closing the property. So. When we close in June, which is ideal, so that's what we're planning on right now. Um, we're going to start paying out on January 1, 2024, and then they're going to be processed um, every month after that, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So expenses increase in, in year one. We're about a 16% average uh, increase across all three properties, 14% increase in insurance, and 16% increase to repairs and insurance, which um, if people don't account for a big enough bump in these expenses, uh, that's being a little bit aggressive, right? Okay. They're, they're understating how, how much they're going to have to spend and overstating how much they're going to return. So that's over promise under deliver. And mm -hmm. that's against how we, uh, how we roll and your projected yeah. annual rent raises. We're looking at a very modest 3% annual, uh, rent increase, uh, once we're stabilized. Okay. Like 3% in, uh, inflation rate is like historically maybe the average is probably even higher now because we've been running really hot for the past few years with COVID, uh, yep. but we still run 3%. So because okay. the reality is probably gonna be higher than this, that's why we hit our returns sooner than later. Okay. Right? okay. okay. And that is it. That was the whole entire presentation. All right. Now I will relay back to Herbie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm also gonna, I'll upload this to, um, to YouTube. 
and okay. uh, I'll send you the link so that you can okay. um, you can take a look at it, and then I'll make okay. the link public on Monday. And okay, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Russell. You're very welcome, Susie. It was great talking to you. Likewise, likewise. Bye.